Welcome to the next Big Drives user group webinar. Uh, my name is Kevin Toms. I'm actually new to Bitrise. I'm a developer advocate. So uh, I'm very happy to be here. And I'm sure you will see me more at these kind of events. Uh, this is a community event and it's hosted by Bitrise, but the content is owned by the experts, the community experts that will be presenting today. We have three experts presenting. They're all members of the Bitrise Experts Program, uh, which is a membership program for Bitrise users who have substantial uh, experience with uh, Bitrise. The benefits of the Experts Program include unique swag, of course, along with exclusive discounts, invitation to participate in community events and other benefits. It's an opportunity uh, once you've built up your Bitrise experience over a period of time to share your knowledge with the community and uh, to receive additional ac active additional benefits from, from Bitrise and of course collaborate and meet other members of the community. Today we have uh, three experts presenting and um, after each presentation, there will be a few minutes for questions. Uh, there's chat enabled, which some of you are already using, which is great. And, um, but if you've got questions, uh, please use the Q and A um, feature to ask the questions. And there'll be a few minutes after each presentation, uh, which will ask the questions of the presenter. Um, I'll post a bunch of links into the chat window as well which will give you links to help you uh, communicate to Bitrise. Uh, so please follow and, and then you know uh, about more events coming along down the line. Okay, we've got three presenters today. Uh, Carol Rotniak, uh, he's the first up. Uh, he's an Android developer at Droids on Roids. Wisdom uh, World Culture, he's a lead engin engineer at uh, Savis. And uh, Motaz Nabil, He'll be on later, a senior software engineer at Delivery Hero. Okay, so uh, today I will talk to you uh, briefly about utility workflows. So first let's start about uh, introduction. What is a workflow? not taking utility into account yet. Uh, so basically, workflow is a sequence of steps which are executed in order. You can see it here. And also environment variables, stack. Uh, it can be Linux stack or Mac OS various versions. Uh, and also triggers. Trigger, for example, uh, on pull request creation or uh, push or tuck, uh, push branch and push tuck. Uh, there are also a few other, uh, let's say, configurations, uh, sources like code signing and secrets, but there are not workflow specific. And the workflows has ability to be chained. You can insert the before run and after run properties. And as you can see here, there is a PR uh, workflow which stands for pull request. And we have a prepare workflow, which uh, in this case clones git repo and pulls the bitrise cache. And we have also published results uh, workflow, which in, this is not visible, but it's just deploy uh, results. And this prepare and publish results workflow can be reused. So you can have more than one main workflow like PR, and you can share the uh, prepare along two or more work workflows. So you don't need to repeat that common steps like git clone and bitrise cache pool. I will show it on an example uh, shortly. Okay, so this is this was about normal workflows and what are utility workflows? Let's start about start from definition. So utility workflows can can be run directly. 
they cannot have a trigger, but there is a star. In fact, they can have a trigger, but that trigger is not fully functional. I will explain it shortly. And what uh, distinguish workflow, normal workflows from utility workflows, it's an its name. Uh, they start with underscore. And uh, what is important, the utility workflows keeps executing on the same stack as uh, the workflow, which let's say it parent workflow. This is true uh, also for the non-utility chain workflows by before run and after run. Okay, so let's jump into utility workflows directly. Uh, if you open the Bitrace.io website uh, application page on the run uh, pop-up, you can see that you can choose a workflow to be run and utility workflows are also here, but they are grayed out. They cannot be started. Yeah. So that's the uh, first difference between utility workflows and, and the normal regular workflows. And what can they be used for? Yeah. Um, basically for aggregating common groups of actions, groups of steps, like uh, Git cloning, activating SSH key for Git uh, connection, pulling the cache. Uh, this group is executed before the actual build, before the main steps. And they can also be used at the end. For example, for sending notifications to Slack, Teams, email, they can deploy results to Bitrace.io and other services like AppCenter or uh, Play Store, and also can be used for cache pushing. Interesting example is in uh, the Gradle Runner official step. Let's look at it. Yeah, there are these workflows, CI workflow doesn't use utility workflows, but as you can see, the, it has no steps. It only consists in chained workflows, child or ch children workflows before run and after run, and it contains no steps. All these steps are located in the uh, children, children workflows. Okay, let's go back into presentation and yeah, here is the example. It is from the uh, one of the real uh, commercial apps which, which I am working on. Uh, so we have a prepare workflow which uh, does the steps which are executed before every other normal workflow. We first save the build start time it's used for internal analytics. And then, as usual, activate SSH key, clone git repo uh, to get the code. Oh, sorry. Then we uh, fetch a tax. Uh, this is needed for internal checks and pull the bitrace uh, IO cache. And then normal workflow ex executes. It can be a workflow for, for PR, which does the unit tests, static code analysis, uh, etc or it can be a deploy build, which deploys build uh, after merge to the app center. And at the end of each workflow, no matter if PR or deploy, uh, we calculate the build duration using the build start time server saved here. And we send the build status to Slack. Okay. Uh, Utility workflows are uh, cool, but uh, there are a few traps which you should be aware of. If you list the workflows in using the CLI by command bitrace, work, bitrace workflows, uh, it will also show utility workflows. And you can see that it says that you can run this workflow, but uh, using bitrace run prepare. Okay, let's check what happens if I try to run the utility workflow. Okay. Uh, 
Yeah, I have the same projects, so utility workflows. And for example, I try to run prepare. Yeah, it says that uh, it is runnable, but um, unfortunately, it cannot be run because utility workflows can be triggered directly. Yeah, so that's the issue with. Uh, Bitrace CLI. And the second trap is the uh, selector of stack. If you go uh, to the configuration page on Bitrace.io, you can choose the stack for all the workflows, including the utility workflows, but uh, this uh, selection here is meaningless uh, because utility workflows keeps executing on the same workflow on which build has started. Yeah, and uh, the last trap is that uh, build uh, cannot be triggered if the utility workflow is an entry point. Uh, but in fact, it is. it starts, but it just fails at the beginning. Mm, you cannot set a trigger to the utility workflow, but if you rename it, prepending it with underscore and uh, the trigger for that workflow exists before that rename, after renaming, uh, the trigger will, will, will still be valid, but will be not non-functional. Yeah, and uh, that's all about uh, utility workflows. So our next talk, talk is from Wisdom, and uh, Wisdom is a software engineer with considerable experience in mobile development, a native uh, Android and iOS development, Flutter dev, Jetpack Compose, documentation, technical writing, community management, and Firebase developer. And uh, Wisdom's talk will be on uh, testing, and uh, he'll explain it in his talk. Would you like to take over, Wisdom? All right, thank you. Yeah, hello everyone. Yeah, um, I'm an Android engineer. I work with Servix. So um, today we'll be talking about automating Firebase Test Lab using using Bitrise in Android development. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Okay, if you see my screen, just let me know. All right, guys, my screen. Yes, we can. All right, see all right. Thank you. Okay, so my topic today is automating Firebase um, test lab. Sorry, what? Okay, sorry. All right, so definitely you might want to know what is Firebase test lab. So Firebase test lab is a cloud-based app testing infrastructure. It's one operation you can test Android or iOS app across a wide variety of uh, devices and device configuration. So you see how nice and beautiful it is. So it doesn't just work on only Android apps, it also work across iOS apps. And also when you come to the um, cross-platform apps too, they can also work very fine. And you can also see the results, including the logs, the videos and screenshots in Firebase console. So you want to know the importance of Firebase Test Lab. One, it gives you suggestion on how to improve your UI. So when you build your app, you upload and it scans through your app, it will give you, it will give you some suggestions to help you improve your UI. And secondly, it gives you screenshots with, with the suggestions. So it's not like you just drop the suggestions with text. So to make it uh, much um, understandable and clear and concise, so to give you with a screenshot. So you see, let's say you build, a very simple app, let's say um, a normal Android Hello World app that just have the text Hello World. So it will screenshot that screen with the Hello World and give you a suggestion underneath that to make it much easier for you to understand. So it gives you the performance of your app UI. So to tell you how your UI performs. It will also, you will, you will get test results more quickly when testing with um, the virtual devices. 
it supports continuous testing integration, which we'll be talking about today. And you can run tests with so many devices on the go. So this is for Firebase Test Lab. Now we have the Firebase Test Lab step in Bitrise. So Firebase Test Lab step helps you to automate the UI, the UI testing process in Bitrise. And you might want to know what um, a step is. A step contains the code that performs the view tax. So for example, you have your Glean clone, your, your Git clone step. So what it does is it clones your Git repository at the start of a build. So you see how it is. So how Bitrise Firebase Test Lab steps works. So first you have your Android Studio where you build your app and you push. So when you push either to Bitbuckets or you push to GitHub or to GitLab, the next step it goes down to Bitrise. Bitrise sends it to Firebase, sends it back to Bitrise, and Bitrise will sync it and the next thing you get a result. So that's how it works, how simple it works. So the guide to set up your Firebase test slap will be tries. So although I would not be going on how to set it up in, in your Bitrise to start up your Bitrise in Android. So I'll just go straight so you get to understand a few of the steps. So let's say you click on this. It will take you to this section where you have your build, your workflow, your add-ons, your teams, code, and settings, and a few other options. So you just go back to your workflow and in your workflow, you have to search for Android UI. So you have to search for um, virtual devices testing. So this is the particular step that helps you to do that. So one thing you have to note is it works with the app build. So you, you have to have this Android build before this Android build step will have to be before the virtual device testing step. So when you're done with that, you save and you push from your gear, you push from your Android Studio down to your GitHub or GitLab or Bitbucket, then to push it down and synchronize it and give it the results. So if it's successful, you get this page. If it's not successful, you also get this page, but not the green, you have the red one. But the red one is, is also normal. <laughs> so when you're done, when you, when you get the success story here, so you click on the test report. Then from the test reports, you now see your Firebase test lab step here. So there you will have to see a few of the informations, like the suggestions and if you're letting you to see there. So thank you. So what I would do right now, I would head over to Firebase platform. I will not build from scratch, so I will not take so much time. So just head over there, then you just see the test I've written before the results and you get the suggestions yourself from there. All right. Okay, so now this is test I've written before. So you click on this view. So there's been some time to open up. All right, so this is the page I you saw a few minutes ago. So although things have changed, we have the trace and okay, we have the trace now. So you click on the test report. Then you get to see your Firebase test lab. So you click on the Firebase test lab. Click on your test cases. So you have the test cases here. You have the performance to see how your app is, how your app is performing, the CPU performance, the memory usage, and the network. So you click on the video. This video is just a walkthrough of your app, how the Firebase test lab crawled your app to get the suggestions and screenshots. So you can click on the video. So this is how we crawled my app. Okay, so the next one you click, click on the screenshot. So these are the screenshots. After crawling the app, these are the screenshots the crawler got and screenshot of the whole app. So you have your artifact and you have your, your logs. So that's it, yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you, Wisdom.
I will move on to uh, Motas now. If you're ready, you could uh, unmute and enable your video. Hi there. I give it already. Let you go ahead. Thank, thanks. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for having me today. Um, hi, everyone. Um, my name is Motas Nabil, and today I will uh, be talking about the parallelization of Android test uh, using Firebase, Flank, and uh, Bitrace. So let me first share my screen. And I hope that okay. So can you see my presentation now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. So today we will talking about the parallelization of Android UI test with Bitrace, Flank, and the Firebase test lab. So um, um, again, my name is Motaz Nabil. Currently, I'm working as a senior software engineer in test at Delivery Hero uh, in Berlin, in Germany. And uh, I worked before in different business domains like agriculture, telecom, healthcare, fashion, and food delivery. I worked with different test framework for web, mobile, and ABI using different set of tools and programming languages. I also worked with different CI CD pipelines like Bitrice, GitHub Actions, GitLab, and Jenkins. I'm also uh, one of the Bitrice experts and also AWS community builder. And uh, for sure, you can also join the um, Bitrice expert program here for sharing any story or any video, any step, anything that you did with Betrays, for sure you can join us in the expert program. Uh, so I will start usually about, um, or usually I'm starting with uh, the problems. So mainly we have here two problems. So let's discuss what are our problems and what we are planning to fix with this uh, situation. So um, here, Testing solutions or now organizations are moved to test automation from manual testing. And now most of the organization are talking about scaling, scaling infrastructure, scaling the business, uh, uh, and also scaling your uh, test uh, automation solutions. So you wanted to cover end-to-end -end, end -end solutions for business, for critical business test cases. So most of the scenarios, the manual tester would be uh, like uh, take a lot of time, a lot of effort from the test engineers. So we need to think about solutions for test automation. Uh, but one area is still the most organizations or teams are still struggling with. It's the scalability to run multiple tests in Baron. So okay, we will start with test automation, but we still have a problem how we can scale our tests. So for example, if we have one day, we will have 1000 test cases and how we can run these test cases, for example, in every BR. So it will take for sure a long time and maybe it will uh, exceeding uh, like um, two or three hours, which is something will not be acceptable. So the second problem is emulators and simulators are always or usually slow to start. Tests take forever to finish or even fail beca uh, because of time out or the performance issue. So and ev every time you are repeating your test because you faced a problem in the, uh, in the emulators, the simulators are not uh, initialized and a lot of things. Uh, and to fix this problem, we will talking about the solution for this problem first. So this uh, give you ability to uh, what about that you can use uh, like a cloud provider such as Firebase Test Lab from Google. And also as, as Wisdom mentioned, it's uh, you can use it for running Android and iOS on, on cloud. So now you are avoiding uh, simulators and, and the emulators issues, and you can go to the provide or cloud providers such as uh, Firebase Test Lab from Google. And also you can have different um, cloud vendors in this area like Source Labs, uh, a browser stack or even uh, uh, AWS device form as a, as a service from AWS. So this is for solving this problem, but still, what about executing? So we are now running our test suite on Firebase Select, but what about executing a large test suite? It can also take time to finish and as Firebase runs the test sequential. So for example, if we select one simulator or one visual or physical device on Firebase Lab and they start running our test suite, it will run in sequential way. So we will run one by one, so which is also will take time. So we, we didn't fix the, the previous or the first problem. So let's assume that here we have this is a default testing or test runner which with Firebase Lab. Uh, we are assuming that we have a test suite, it's including, for example, five test cases. 
here we have our test suite and we almost say that each test case can take five minutes like uh, estimation and when we send this test cases to firebase test lab to run in the normal mode or with for example the existing step with with bitrise and the firebase test lab it will run in a sequential mode so we will take all of this suite and run one by one on one device only so it's almost maybe we can say it's it will take about 25 minutes on one device so now we we know the estimation about our test cases this is but for sure for huge test cases it will take more than this time so now let's think about the solution now our our tests are scale are scaling and uh, we are adding more test cases every day and we need to figure out how we can reduce the time because every every time you are adding one test so you are adding uh, additional time to your running uh, or build time so here or that's where flank step uh, or steps in so what is flank so now we have a bitrace, we, we have a Firebase slab, and we will put something in the middle between the uh, bitrace and, and the Firebase. Flank is a barrel Android and iOS test runner for Firebase slab. So by the way, you can run also the iOS test cases and also it supports uh, XCUI test and early gray. So it's a for Android and iOS, uh, it's a test runner for Android and iOS, and it's only for Firebase test lab. So this solution is only for Firebase test lab with Flank. So it's like a test runner that gives you ability to run in different devices at the same time and the barrel or barrelization solution for Firebase test lab. And this project is open source and is developed by a Walmart lab uh, company. So what's Flank? Let's talk in, uh, in details about Flank. So Flank is a YAML configuration file compatible with the GC Cloud CLI. So it's a YAML file. It's to give you uh, the ability to write all the things in one YAML file. And then you are sending from this YAML file, you are running a Flank command line and it's taking all the configuration from this file and go to, to a Firebase lab and run the target application. Previously, when you wanted to run with GC Cloud CLI, if you installed the GC Cloud in your device, on local device, or even in, in, if you are using a Bitrise, without Flank, you can use this command line. By installing GC Cloud, by configuring GC Cloud on your machine, by authenticating GC Cloud to be able to send and, and uh, send the applications and get the result from Firebase, you should run GC Cloud Firebase test Android run. And then, you should pass this one will invoke the Firebase SLA for Android and you can view the result. But you should select from all of these parameters or arguments what you need to passing with this command line. For example, I wanted to select the application. I wanted to select the device type, the device version, the OS version on this device, the time out, what is the test package, uh, what is the uh, network profile if I wanted to uh, to edit it? So, um, do you want to uh, auto uh, Google login in the device or not? And a lot of things. So it was a hard a little bit by, by, for example, if you write this one, you will find the mistakes in syntax and sometimes you waste time to, to fix this problem. But now with Flank is configured or it's switched to a YAML file. So just in one YAML file, as flank.yaml file, you can create it on Bitrise, on Fly, or you can have it on your repository. So you have two section here, GC Cloud and you have Flank. GC Cloud, this is all the parameters or settings related to the GC Cloud command line. And this is related to Flank. So here, this is a, um, like a feature or the things that Flank needs. And this is for GC Cloud. For example, here you have the result bucket. You have the result directory. So if you wanted to share your test result in a specific bucket, or if you have already a, a Google Cloud bucket in your Google uh, um, Cloud project, and you wanted to save all the result in this bucket, you can specify it here with the name of the of the bucket. For example, I'm using TA report. And uh, for uh, the result directory, this will be the folder inside this bucket. For example, we will, I, I, I am using, for example, the Bitrise build number as uh, environment variable here. So I will get the build number from the workflow and then we'll name the folder with this one. So in each, in, inside the bucket, we will have a folder for each uh, build, which including is all the, all the, the test result for each build. And for sure, we can record the videos also. This is all the things that's related to GC Cloud. 
So here you can find this one and here you can find this one. So if you wanted to use flank, so you should use it in this uh, YAML file configuration. And if you wanted to use uh, the normal one or previously without flank, we, we were using a record video like this, like a parameters or argument. And then we have here the device, for example, you are specifying the model, it's Pixel 2 and, and the version of the OS on, on this device. And also Firebase Slab are supporting, uh, is supporting uh, physical and visual devices. And here, this is a configuration for Flank. Flank here has uh, different uh, features. The first one or the most important one that's related to, or this is the main uh, idea about our presentation today is the max test charts. Here I am specifying it or adding the value is three. That's mean that I wanted to run this package. So here, this is what I want. This is a test target. What I wanted to run, I want to run the package, this one under regression. So this is a package in my application and I wanted to run this all the test cases inside this package. And this is a device that I wanted to run this on this one. So when I say it's three, this means that I will split all the test cases under this package into three groups or three subgroups. And it will split all the test cases. For example, if I have 15 test cases here and I say in three, so it, each, each group will, will include five test cases. And then the, another uh, option the, uh, is a number of test run. Uh, do you want it to run or repeat the test on this device or not? No, I am saying it's I want to run it only one time. And also there is one uh, another uh, feature of Flank is a smart Flank path, which is, is a, a XML file. Flank is saving the configuration or saving the test results, the, the test uh, uh, the time of, of running this test in one example file, and it will start comparing or differ differentiate between the, the upcoming runs and start comparing between this uh, test and give you the differentiate between the previous run and the, the current run that you have. So here features uh, or flank features are so uh, test sharding which is splitting your test suite into small groups and running on barrel devices at the same time cost report so it will also give you uh, uh, information about the report that you had on, on firebase slab what the cost of the devices that you are running on or what you uh, that you used html report of the result and uh, g unit xml report and also smart flank that i i described in the previous slide so let's run it again with a sharding test with Firebase to slab. So here we will add a flank as a, a one additional step. So again, we have the, the same test suite. We have five test cases. Each one is taking about five minutes. And the with flank, we have here, uh, we will split the test. So when we said we will run on two devices or shard two, that will take or split and test cases on two devices. For example, we will take two test cases in one device and three test cases on the another device. And the test suite now, now it can be, this one can be 10 minutes and this one can be 15 minutes. So almost we will run on 15 minutes, which is uh, 10 minutes less than the normal run because now we are running on the same time. We are running uh, on different devices. So we will like reduce the time uh, uh, for running our test case. How does it work or how we configured uh, um, a flank in our project? Uh, the first one that you should have a Google Cloud project and account for sure to be able to use uh, Firebase also. So you should also have a Firebase account and link your uh, GC Cloud to this account. Add your project to Firebase create a service account on Firebase to get access over API because when you are using Flank or Firebase, they are using a GC uh, Cloud APIs to sending the APKs to Firebase as lab and getting the result from Firebase. So you should have a service account and adding it at, as for example, environment variable or like um, like this one, you can add, uh, add it as a generic file storage on Firebase as lab or uh, environment variable. So you will download the JSON file or upload it to Bitrise as a secret key, for example, which contains a private key, which can be added directly to a generic file storage, something like the key store for Android applications in your Bitrise project and use it for authentication, just to authenticate that this account can be able to take the ABKs the AB to Firebase Lab and give the result again from Firebase. And this, uh, because that I, I mentioned that we are using a GC Cloud uh, APIs. So here, don't forget, you should enable two APIs on, on Google Cloud account. One is Cloud Testing API, and another one is Cloud Tool Result API. 
the, uh, this uh, two APIs or these two, OPI, uh, two APIs help us to send the APKs and get the result from Firebase the select. And for sure, you will create the Flank YAML file uh, on Bitrise, and then we can run Flank after this, uh, all of this configuration. So this is mainly the workflow with Bitrise. So here I, I just uh, summarized the, the steps in this one. And this is the workflow that already exists in Bitrise. So for example, if I am pushing or creating a new code or anything on, on the um, GitHub uh, project, or even you can use Bitbucket or uh, GitLab as a source code. And with the webhook, we will run or, uh, or initialize a Bitrise build. And with the, the, the first step that we, we create that download the a Google service account from the key that we added in the in, in the generic file storage, and then we will save it in our project to or authenticate it in the in the Bitrise workflow to be able to send the applications to Firebase, and then. So here we can just also sync with this one. So we will install the missing Android, uh, any Android SDK in our application. And then we will go with this step, Android build for UI testing. So here we should use this one. This is, is not Android build. We are not here, not building only Android application. We are building both ABKs. We are building the application under test, which is the application. This is a calculator, for example, in my case. And the building also the test ABK, which is because I'm using Espresso uh, as a test uh, uh, framework, and um, and we are uh, like Espresso converting our test to test ABK. So when when you are using this step, you will have two ABKs in this step, and this this will be sent to Firebase. And also one more uh, additional info for for you that here you can use two different things. You already have a flank uh, existing or, or, or predefined step on, on, on Bitrise. You can use it. Just you can pass the flank YAML file to this step and select the version that you wanted to use with this flank. Or you can use your custom scripts. And this is my case. So in, in this demo, I will show you that I'm using a special um, a special uh, scripts and I'm, I'm generating the YAML file on fly and also pulling the, the, the file or the jar file from Flank from uh, GitHub repository from the release page and run it from this two scripts. This also show you the, the power of the script st uh, step on Bitrise. So whatever you are using or selecting here, you can use the Flank and or the script one. And then from this one, we are running Firebase or sending our test ABK and application to Firebase with the configuration, how many shards and what the packages that we are testing and so on. And then after Firebase finished, so we will get the test report as a cost report as the artifacts to Bitrise again and so on. So this is mainly what, what the, the, the framework or the CI flow now uh, displayed. And now let's jump to uh, the, the demo. So here I already um, prepared this uh, workflow. So here I just wanted to show you this is the API on the Google Cloud Platform. This should be enabled, the test uh, the result, and this one also for cloud testing. And also I created my custom bucket because I wanted to save all the result in this one. And you can see also this is the build number from Bitrise. Each build number or each run, it will save in one build. And after that, you can open it. You can find here that you have uh, the GUnit uh, report is a cost report uh, and the Android application, the application and the test ABK and the metrics and all the info that you have on this one. And this is the, the, the workflow in Bitrise. So here you just, for example, on the code signing page, you will have, you should upload the JSON file on uh, code signing. It will be like a secret. And then in this step, you can download the Google service. So you will are downloading it in, for example, this folder in the application, the JSON one. And after that, you are authenticating the service to the uh, Google account. And then installing the missing Android build for UI testing. So build both APKs. And here, the output, you will have Bitrise ABK path and the Bitrise test ABK path because we are building uh, both APKs. And the with generate flank, uh, here, this is, I'm, I'm, I'm using the custom scripts because it's you can change whatever you want and on fly and it will change it. 
So here, for example, I am using a script a step from Betrace. So with a script a step, you can do whatever you want. It's like a magic. And here you can create a flank YAML file. I'm creating the file, and then I start adding my configuration. And, and GC Cloud, this is a bucket, the environment the variables, the coverage, the, the everything that I want, the annotations that I wanted to run on, on my application, the device that I wanted to use. And here I am adding a flank. For example, here I am saying that I want to run on three devices. And here, this is the, the, the file of the smart flank. And by the way, if the smart flank uh, not existing here and we are running for the first time, it will be generated and we'll be adding in this bucket. And then we again, we what the target always run. So we are adding here the annotation. And also if I, uh, let me, um, Open, this is my simple application as a calculator. I have three packages, end-to-end -end regression and the smoke test, and I have three custom annotations. And for, for example, I will run the annotation for regression test. So I will run these three test cases that including the regression annotation. So because that from here, I am saying that I will run the regression. So annotation, this is a command from GC Cloud. I will run the annotation under this package and I will run the regression test. And then with run, with run flank, this is just for, for configuring the YAML file. So after that, when run flank, here we are getting the, uh, from GitHub, from the flank repository, we are getting the release. And also you can change the release version here if they have already a new version. So you are fetching the flank jar file because it's a Java uh, uh, file. So you can download the file in, 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 in the local folder in the machine on Bitrise. And, and, and for sure, because it's Android, so it's a Linux machine, so you can save it in this path. So now we are saving flank jar file. And after that with Java minus jar, so we will run Java with this one flank jar and we will run Firebase test Android run, just it. So it's the same GC Cloud CLI, but we are running it using a flank. So with this command line, flank will fetching the, the YAML file, will get the information, will start sending the result to uh, Firebase. So, uh, and here, for example, this is a success. Maybe we can trigger one build. So for example, I can run uh, or rebuild again. And uh, yeah, we can say it. And, and until we we reach it to the flank step, I can show you the, the previous one. So here also you can follow uh, all the steps. And also from where I can get the, uh, here we can in the, in the flank file, from where I can get this something like this environment variable. Also, you can find under the documentation on Bitrise, you can find all the exposed uh, Bitrise or, or the, the the environment variables that you can use. For example, here I'm using Bitrise build number. You can using the application URL or anything that you want. And I will name the bucket or the folder in this one. So now I'm running it. So I am now installing the missing. So I already uh, saved my Google service here, authenticated. And then after that, I will run this one. So let's go to one succeeded until we reach to this one. And I will show you one of these uh, steps. So here, this is a previous run. And um, here you can just go down and we will uh, expand the logs. And then under the flank configuration, so here we have a flank, run flank. So it's taking the YAML file already, the configuration, everything, and it will go to a smart flank. There is no smart flank. So it will give you the shard times, saving one shard, uploading the ABKs, the test ABK. So for example, I was specifying that I wanted to run in five shards. So it will run five, uh, seven test cases on five shards. It will split dynamically. And then you give you uploading the regression to the bucket, which under the, uh, uh, the folder of, of the build number. And then you will have here, you will watch the, the metrics. And in the another side on the um, Firebase test lab, you can open the test lab and the WIS calculator. So for sure, now we are running this one. So we reach it to this uh, uh, step now. So uh, this one is running. So yes, sure, we are now running on three shards, seven test cases. And uh, here we are start running and on Firebase test lab, this our matrix. So now we can see the type is in instrumentation because with Firebase test lab is not supporting, uh, for example, I, I, I can't run APM test, for example, this is a cross uh, platform uh, test cases. So it's, it's only supporting native test frameworks. So you can run uh, Espresso, you can run XCI test, you can run early gray. So here I can open 
this application, I can run the matrix. This matrix is that related to what I am running now. So here, this is the matrix. This is also the link for the matrix that I'm running now. And here, I can open it. And now I can find that I am running on three shards, which is I am now using also Pixel 2. This is a virtual device. And the ABI level is 28. So I will wait until the shards. I think it will not take long time. And then after that, we can check the result to here also. Now we can check uh, the number of our build. So it's now uh, 33. And if I go to, to the bucket and I just refresh this page, and uh, here I will find that um, they already created one folder for our current build, but it's still it's not including, it's just including the test APK and the application. And then after that, it will update it with a test result to when Firebase test lab is uh, finished. So I just wanted to uh, refresh this screen and uh, yeah, I will uh, go again to this one. So here you can check the test run. So we're still running on the charts. So here, here we have the different charts, chart number one, zero, or two. So I will wait until this one finished and then I can check the result. Or this is the previous one or the succeeded one. This is all the things. So you can find this is the cost report. This is the one feature from Flank. This is a virtual device, and this is the cost for five minutes. So you, we run five minutes on virtual devices on Firebase. So this is the cost report. And also it's uploading the cost report in the folder in the storage under the build number. And we run one matrix. The, the outcome is the, the build is succeeded. There's a matrix ID, the device name that we use, the number of test cases, and also it's uploading all the things or the result in this one, and fetching the artifacts in this one. So Flank is finished. So here also we are almost, we are finishing now the running. So maybe also we can uh, refresh this um, screen to check it's finished or not. So we will waiting this one, but this is the main idea about how we can running. So from this configuration, for example, I have like 500 test cases and I wanted to run all of them under regression. So for example, a nightly build. So for example, you can here specify, I will run on five, uh, 10 devices, for example, I can run on 50 devices. So you can specify whatever you want to hear, or if you wanted to save the YAML file in your repository, you can do it for sure. You can save the flank YAML file. And also the one, uh, the additional steps that I told you about, for example, here you can use the flank, the predefined flank that you will find under the test packages or types. So here, if you click this one, so it will, uh, for sure, you will not use this in this case. So with Flank, you can just here specifying the service account JSON because this is mandatory for Flank in general to, to, to like authenticate you to access to Google Cloud. And then you should add the configuration file for Flank. This will be a Flank YAML file. And then you can use which Flank version that you wanted to use as latest or you need to specify the the version that you wanted to use. And if you wanted to use any common flag, something like this, so Flank Android test or Flank iOS test, you can do it. So now the test is succeeded. And if we uh, go back, so here, everything is running smoothly. So we can open the shards and uh, we can open to check what's including. It is the same thing, Firebase is including videos, uh, reports and everything. But here we just open the test cases. And we can find here that we have only two test cases. And if we open this test cases, we can have here two test cases also say so it's different. So this one is not in this uh, case. And if we open the third one and with uh, test cases, you can also find here three test cases. So we divided the seven test cases in three shards. So we are saving time now uh, or saving our time build. And here, if we up like uh, um, um, refresh the view. Um, you can find here the cost report that you can see also in the trials, the uh, G unit report and the metrics result. Uh, that's it. And one more thing, maybe this is a custom solution. So uh, just if you didn't define the test report, so because this is a test report, it's work with the predefined step for, for with far basis lab. But here now the report is not displayed. Why? Because now it's not uh, configured. So in the next 
step or if you wanted to complete this solution, you should fetch all the report from this uh, bucket, sending to Bitrace and adding it in the custom report on the custom uh, uh, like a file format to be able to display it in the test reports because now we are adding in this one. And maybe in the next uh, like um, webinars or, or user groups after that, maybe we can complete the solution by fetching this report from Fire uh, from Firebase uh, or sorry from Google Cloud uh, bucket, and then we can uh, like create a, a, a custom report on Bitrise and then sending it to S3 bucket by displaying uh, like a static uh, website with dashboards and with uh, like uh, uh, like details the report about our test cases. Uh, just one more thing about the bit rise. So Firebase Test Lab, just about pricing to just to take care about this one. We have two plans on Firebase Test Lab. We have a free plan. You can execute five test runs per day on a real device and the 10 test runs on a virtual device. Just because if you are trying a lot in one day with a free plans and it's not, uh, and sometimes or suddenly it gives you a error that you are not running it or something is not uh, um, is not clear. So you just need to take care or put in your mind about these free plans. But what I did now in, in the demo just to demonstrate the solution, I'm using a plus plan is like a pay as you go. So they charge it $1 per device per hour and for virtual device and $5 per device per hour uh, for a real devices. So the summary is, Setting up Firebase as lab flank with Bitrise is pretty easy. So just straightforward. You just wanted to configure your project and you just wanted to know what, just to get the access, is the, sorry, the, the service token or the JSON file and generate your, or create your flank file and just it. And running uh, the automation uh, UI and instrumentation test on Bitrise on a regular basis. So now you can run this CI on every BR, for example. So you can now be confident about your application status, your uh, business, your uh, your critical test cases. You are kind of running end to end test cases in this uh, scenario, and it's give you or adding a lot of values and and uh, bugs that can be caught uh, quickly at early stages with this with this, which is the the main point of CI. So when we're talking about continuous integration, we we fail we fail fast. So you can say we are failing fast because we are catching the errors in the early stages. Uh, you can save a lot of time by running a test in barrel with this uh, solution. And the last thing, I, I encourage you to give a try if if this solution fits your needs. So uh, maybe your business, your uh, your type of testing is not fit in this scenario. But if you found it that you are you can use this one, so I encourage you to try this because it will save a lot of time for uh, your uh, solutions. Um, thank you, and uh, yeah, for uh, for any questions, so we can just uh, check it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we ha we have a few questions. Uh, thanks, uh, Motaz. Thanks for a, a great uh, presentation there. Um, I'll just go through the. Uh, Q and A questions first. There's well, one from, and I've noticed that some of them you partly answered as you further presented, actually. But the first one is from Victor, and he says, "Why do you use script steps to generate the flank config and to run it instead of using the flank step?" Okay, um, for me, I'm I'm just uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, if you are using or creating as a file, it's uh, the solution is contains the pros and cons. So you can change anything on fly. This is just one step. You can change, for example, you can increase the number of shards. Just what you can change the value and save it. But also the 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 cons about this solution that can anyone delete anything from this configuration, which is will be not valid. So you can save the flank file in your repository, as I mentioned. And if you want to change anything, you can open the BR and then review, anyone reviews this PRs, but it's, it's sometimes will take time. But if you want to change something like ad hoc or quickly, so you can just create it on fly and you can change anything on, on fly. So because that I'm, I'm, I'm using as a step on this one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, next one from Oliveira. Great presentation, Motaz. Thanks for sharing. I have one question. Do you know tools for running parallel tests in services like AWS, Device Farm, or Browser Stack? Um, I think Browser Stack is already uh, um, give you the ability for running uh, a UI test in Barrel, uh, but it's uh, but it's, it's it will be based on your test framework. For example, you should configure your test framework. For example, if you are using Test NG as a test runner or G unit, you should configure your test cases to be able to run on, 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 in groups. 
And then with with fire with uh, sorry with with browser stack, you can just tell them that I wanted to run this configuration, and it will spin up for you uh, uh, devices as I know with uh, with uh, browser stack. Uh, for AWS a device farm, I think you can do it, um, but it's it's required a lot of work. So that you 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 should also create a custom configuration YAML file for AWS device farm to be able to uh, add your custom configuration. And the AWS device farm documentation, this is the, the main source for this one. You can find all the details about how we can create a custom. For example, you can create custom artifacts also. Uh, for uh, uh, for your uh, output, and you can also create a custom uh, way to run on barrel devices. But uh, one more thing about AWS Device Farm: it's only support physical devices. So you always should take care about the pricing. Uh, Firebase is supporting both uh, browser stack supporting both, and also SoSlab supporting both type of of devices. But for AWS Device Farm, especially, it's only physical devices. So if you have already AWS account and your company work it, so in this case will not be a problem. But uh, don't try it if you have a free trail account because it will cost uh, a lot of uh, money. Yeah. Okay, I fa in fact, I think uh, Cotter's question on the chat is along the lines of cost as well. Uh, how many tests do you run in test lab? Uh, what frequency and what are the costs for this is the first part of his question. Um, uh, you mean in, in in our team or or or? or yeah, he's it? asking you for an example of what what uh, how much you run uh, uh, and with what frequency and what uh, cost. I think it was yeah. looking for a guideline on costs. Okay, and in, in, in our case, we are not taking yeah, or or. Like we are not taking care about the the, the cost in in our case, but but um, for example, in every BR we are running a specific set of test cases. Like uh, is, this is a few number of test cases, so this is the critical test cases. Without these test cases, we can't merge the BR. So this one we are running on virtual devices, for example. But for example, if you wanted to run in physical device and nightly build to check that everything is okay, so we will run on physical devices, which will, will cost more. But in our case, we have already a, a Google or Firebase account at the company, and so it's not it's about uh, not taking much uh, uh, price or, or money from this one. But it's usually depends about uh, on your needs. So what you need from Firebase or what the number of test cases. But it's usually. With the cost report with Flank, it usually gives you uh, the uh, like the estimation of the cost that you are using. So it's it will it, you can estimate what what time you want to if you want to run on Firebase. Yeah. You get a guideline. Well, that, that's uh, that's helpful. Uh, there was a second part to his question. Can you share a Bitrise YAML or Flank YAML? Is there any Gradle plug plugin to make it easier? Um, yeah. There is a plugin. Uh, there is a plugin uh, already. You can open the Flank uh, GitHub repository. You can find. Uh, I think there is um, a plugin called Gradle, something like this. So it's a plugin for Gradle. So you can integrate it with Gradle. You can find it on on uh, Flank uh, GitHub repository and the documentation. You can find it that you can configure from YAML file or you can use it as a Gradle uh, uh, in your project. Okay, um, and there was further question was how do you figure configure the Google Cloud account? Uh, that's probably something to be answered elsewhere, uh, maybe in a GitHub project or some links to study. I think that's um, asking for examples. I would I would say that was yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe I can share I can share the repo about the, the demonstration or the demo that I used. I can share it. Maybe we can share it and sending to the people, the audience after the after our call. Yeah, we can do okay. it. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, well, thanks very much for that presentation, Motaz, and thanks to uh, all the presenters for the presentation. Um, if you have any more questions, um, you, you can contact us and we can uh, forward them on to the presenters. Um, the community I did include in the chat and also at Bitrise on Twitter is another way to do that. These are uh, regular events, these uh, bugs. Um, the next one is uh, scheduled, I believe, for uh, March the 18th and uh, with a similar format and the other thing is that we you know if you've missed any of this or you you thought it was interesting and you want to dig in and understand it a bit better went a bit fast or you want to study more um, they're all published on youtube on our bitrise channel so you always have um, a chance to to see them again so thank you everyone uh, that uh, brings the 
uh, this Bitrise user group webinar to an end. Appreciate your attendance. Hope to see you again.